As I'm trying to grow my freelance business, I'm trying to move from selling deliverables, such as you know, website design, app design, branding, into selling more strategic processes like the design sprint. Last December, I was in Berlin taking the Design Sprint Bootcamp, AJ and Smart, which was super, super good. And since then, I really enjoy doing Design Sprints for clients and I want to move more of my business uh, to Design Sprints. And so I've invited John, the CEO of AJ and Smart, on a call to ask him what's the best strategy to actually selling Design Sprints to my customers. So here's that talk. I hope you'll enjoy it. What's up, John? So good to have you on camera here with me. Um, let's get right into it. So I've been in your office, I think it was around December, doing the, the Design Sprint Bootcamp, which was super, super awesome. Since then, I had the chance to do it, um, I think, two times already with clients. And I'm looking into, um, I actually want to do much more of these because I really, really enjoy them. Obviously, I feel like I'm providing more value um, and I'm being paid for my thinking, which is great. And I'm just having a good time. Uh, and so and I feel I can be like much more profitable for me than actually selling kind of design deliverables. But the thing is that still most of my clients come to me for kind of design projects because right. that's that's what I'm known for. And that's what they think they need a lot of times. Yeah. And I'm not sure how to do the transition into selling them on the design sprint. And I know that you guys at AJ and Smart, you've actually made the transition from being like a traditional design agencies and selling like design services and moved into selling the sprints only now, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, so how, how does that actually work? Does, do people like, in, at least in the beginning, obviously now everybody knows that you're, they come to you for a design sprint, but how did it get started? Um, okay, so that's it's it's a really it, there was a kind of a messy transition. Just to be super honest, it wasn't like a really smooth, beautiful transition from normal work to the design sprints. Um, and actually, a perfect example of it is the the client that is sitting in the other room right now doing a design sprint. It's a, a football association, um, and yeah, we had been working with them. I guess the way you work with your clients, um, you know, they would contact us and say, hey we want to redesign our website or we want to have like a new um, app and we want you to design that. And then we would figure out like the amount of man days we think that that would take, the amount of weeks that we think that that would take. And we would kind of like give them a package and say, look, it's going to take uh, 20 UX days, 20 UI days, and it's going to cost, I don't know, uh, 60K. Um, and then uh, out of nowhere, we kind of, you know, when that client got back to us the next time, we were like, okay, so we only offer this uh, one week package now. And this one week package costs almost the same amount as the six week package we used to work with you before. So that was the trickiest part, right? So we were essentially, I mean, we were pretty confident that we were, because we were testing it out, that we were getting the same amount of work done in one week using the design sprint um, as we were getting done in like six weeks or sometimes 10 week projects. But this was hard for the clients to swallow. Um, and so what but we you would still you would still promise them the deliverable like a, a, a website or whatever. Well, we uh, yeah, that was another thing. So we were saying we were saying that this was more focused, right? It would, the, the deliverable was something a lot more focused than just like the entire uh, website. It would be OK, you come to us with a problem like you want to dramatically increase the engagement rate on your article page or you want to test out a business model that you're not sure if it's going to work like some subscription model. Um, then you come to us for things like that. And if you want to come to us for more execution related stuff, what we started to tell them is that maybe we're no longer the right company to come to. So we actually had to, um, let's say, let go of a lot of our old clients uh, who were not really willing to because we, we made the the ultimatum, if you want us to do the execution work, you're going to have to pay the price we charge other clients for the design sprint work. And we are not recommending that you do it with us anymore. So we kind of, we put our, you know, we put a line in the sand and we said, we are now a company that deals in, you know, product strategy and product design from a, a, a high level, only working on important projects. And if you really want to call us for, you know, fixing the navigation or for looking at UX related things, we're going to be too expensive, but we'll still be the best. So it's up to you whether you want to pay for that. And so yeah. we kind of went for this. Um, I guess we reduced the amount of options we were offering clients dramatically down to you can only take the design sprint. And here are the reasons you should contact us for the design sprint. 
Um, and it really wasn't a smooth transition. Like I said, there was like a six month period where people were super confused about what we were offering, especially the old clients. They did not get it. Um, it didn't make sense to them. It also didn't work with their pre procurement system. I'm sure that you understand that, you know, um, when you send a client, a, no, a I, have, I've, I have no idea. What's a procurement procurement. I've never heard that word before. Um, no, no, seriously. <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay. So like, you know, when you work with a company and you have to send the bill, sometimes they have like different rules for how the bill has to look and they'll say, oh, you have to write that this is a uh, concept and you have to write that this is uh, seven man days of whatever. Sometimes companies, especially like our clients are mostly big businesses, um, like the bigger like Fortune 500 style. Um, and they always say, look, well, here's how the bill has to look because this is how it works. But then we came along and said, we charge a flat rate. You won't know how many people are going to be in the room. You know, won't know who they are. Um, we're just guaranteeing that you're paying this flat rate price and we're guaranteeing a really amazing result. Um, and that's kind of the angle we took. So we made it into, we treated it like a product. We didn't treat it like a service. And we, we really, I, I would say we were stubborn about how aggressively we avoided um, kind of playing into the way that they wanted to play. So for example, when a client said, okay, but um, I wanna see the CVs of the people who are gonna be in the room. We would say, no, you can't see the CVs of the people who are gonna be in the room. You're buying AJ and Smart. You're buying into the idea that we are controlling the quality. And they would say, okay, but um, I wanna see the day rate approximately of each person. And we say, no, you're not gonna see the day rate. You're char you're, here's the fixed rate price. And this attitude that we kept up for like now two and a half years, has dramatically changed our business. Like it, there's no such thing as anybody asking anymore for the day rates, for the CVs, for the specific people. And it makes AJ and Smart way more scalable. Mm. Did I answer that question yeah, or like the transition? Yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> but, uh, but honestly, yeah. But first but, of all, it was a great question. But what I heard was really, really simple. Dude, you got to change your clients <laughs> because, uh, yes. you know, I'm working mainly like with, with early stage startups. Mm. And so I feel like, first of all, they probably won't have the budget. Absolutely um, not. No. Yeah, and so I told I completely have to change my client base, which is you know a value you know a valid option uh, if I want to go in that direction, which is more strategic. And, and yeah. in that case, I might have to do it anyway to find clients with bigger budgets. But uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. And I mean, then to just to, just to but oh, okay, sorry. Talk, go ahead. Like let, let let's like like percentage wise, how many of your old clients stick to you through this transition and like. Um, actually a hundred percent. So really? like, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. So, and you, but you've worked with big businesses even before, right? Yeah. So we were working with big okay. businesses before. Okay. So I should, I should be clear. We no longer work with startups. That's just not yeah. happening anymore. Um, yeah. early stage is absolutely not even slightly our target. Um, I guess the only types of startups we work with would be in the San Francisco area. Once they have a couple of rounds of, uh, funding, um, yeah. So we were already not working with startups uh, two years ago because we realized, look, if we want to get to the seven figures and, and maybe eight figures that we're looking for to grow this company, uh, startups are not our approach, right? Because we also didn't want to do the venture thing where we kind of take some of the company and then we do the work. Too complicated yeah. for us. We didn't understand it. So um, yeah, we, we didn't do it. But it was a really messy transition. Like it was, like I said, eight, seven to eight, six to eight months of those clients leaving us and being super confused. And, and this client only came back now after maybe 10 months of, of being away because they were like, ah, AJ and Smart is not for us anymore. So we didn't yeah. lose so any clients. So did, but, you, did you have to change your brand while you were doing this? For, I don't know, like your website or what, what you were telling people about your, your agency? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we don't, as you know, we don't really give a shit about our website. So that probably just stayed <laughs> exactly how it is um, anyway. No, but, but I'm just talking about like from the messaging managing expectations kind yeah, of. Yeah, totally. So um, people still called us for UX projects, but we immediately would say, look, 
straight away, look, we're not a design agency that does like production work. Um, we can recommend production work design agencies to you, but we are not that company. If you want us to do it, it's way too expensive. And we just said that always up front as soon as we had the feeling that they were looking for a UX sort of angle. And I mean, most companies, they do call us for product design and UX design in the first place, but then we have to super quickly steer them away from that um, and towards like, okay, look, what is the actual thing you want to solve? Okay, you want to increase engagement, you want to increase conversion rate. That could mean multiples of millions of dollars extra for your company if you would manage to sort solve this problem. We are the people who can help you solve that problem. And we make it, I mean, this is kind of, this is our approach, but we make it, um, we downplay the visual design part and the UX design part. And we say, look, every single company can do a good visual design and UX design. Every single company that's even slightly well known, you don't, that, that's not, that's the commodity. What isn't the commodity is the strategy part, the ability to, for us to be able to pull everything together and say, take that bet, go in that direction and make this product. So that's the thing that we kind of steer people towards in the sale call, sales calls. Awesome. So I think, yeah, that really helped me a lot to understand because that's definitely the direction I want to go in. Yeah. It's just that now I understand what's the first step I have to do. And it's probably change how, you know, the clients that I work with and even probably when you're working with big clients, um, that might mean up moving from freelance to an agency, which is exactly what I want to talk to you, but we'll do it on a separate video. Okay. So thanks for this one and I'll see you on the next video. All right, man. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. Hope you enjoyed this call. Uh, I had another talk with Joan right after that discussing how to move from freelance to an agency, which is kind of what I understood that I should be doing uh, after this talk. Uh, I'll publish it on this channel like probably in two days or something. So be sure to subscribe and follow. Hope you enjoy this and I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm